Welcome back to Mine Operator. Today we're gonna do some blasting. You guys know what that is? It should. If not, you're about to find out. I am with John Norman from ACCX. Yes, we do uh, explosives training, we do explosive consulting, uh, we do various types of blasting and anything really related to interject materials. Uh, quarter inch thick steel hoods around it. Uh, and you have to have locks that are ETF approved, so we put some beefy locks on these. And uh, the idea of this is it is slip proof, weatherproof, somewhat fireproof. You know, this will certainly, like all the uh, vents, it has to be ventilated, you know, to make sure heat doesn't build up, moisture doesn't build up. The vents also are screened so that you can't get any sparks in, and this will protect it pretty well from, like, out. you know, sparks coming in and stuff. Uh, and the other thing, believe it or not, it has to be bulletproof because people yeah. have been killed shooting at these things. So basically the idea of the quarter of steel backed up by wood is it'll stop an average hunting rifle at like 100 yards, like a 30 caliber bullet. I mean, it's also evil to resist that. Gotcha. Gotcha. The wood will contain all the small and everything from that. So storage, this is something suitable for all your 1.4 products. Uh, it can also, this one also doubles as a day box, but it's a steel box lined with plywood. You have to have at least one lock if it's going to be a uh, day box where it's attended. Two locks if it's unattended storage. This one's a, a type four, so it, three, four, it can be used for both. This is like what you, the minimum you could use to store like auto stem or in our case, Royax, which we're going to be using, um, you know, type four magazine. Uh, this is a, a type of day box, it's a special one. This is a, they call it like a DOT box or an IME box. This is for storing lasting caps they're gonna be transported on the same load as other explosives. This is what makes it legal to transport blasting caps and explosives in the same vehicle. Uh, this has to be eighth inch steel, continuously welded, lined with half an inch of sheetrock, half an inch of plywood with uh, like a secure closure. And the idea is that, you know, caps, they, uh, they burn, your vehicle burns down, they're definitely gonna blow up but this will kind of contain that fragment or at least fireproof them for a while. High explosives usually just burn, but if there are any caps mixed in with them, they will go high order. So this is to keep that separate from that. As soon as you have enough material to be placarded, that's a whole other thing and it's way more of a pain. That's up to a thousand pounds of the 1.4 material like this. Ryx though can go unplacarded in a private vehicle, which is really cool. Okay. You can also do that with Anfo. Uh, some of your other tools, you got your, uh, if you're going to cut fuse cord, deck cord, different things like that, typically either has to be a sharp knife and, you know, wood or cut it in the air and no other type of sparking thing. Or like uh, these anvil cutters that have a, like a plastic jaw and, you know, no metal on metal. Fireworks guys use these a lot because they cut thousands of little fuses and stuff. I've seen blasters use them. I don't know if you guys ever do that. You got your air horn because we're going to announce if we're going to blast. The other tools we have on here, a little continuity tester and approved one. Anything in a rock pile is going to get like lost the second you set it down. So I put these Schneiders and everything. Uh, your electrical tape, you're probably guys get through miles of that. You get like the roll, like the dip cans, right? Um, and then your uh, get your blasting machine. This one will do electric or non-electric, non-elk. It's got a little spark thing. You charge it up. You're gonna hold down that charge. I think you 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 got to shoot it last time, didn't yep. you? So yeah, you're gonna I did. hold it down until the light comes on, then. Your countdown on fire. If you release the button, it immediately saves itself. They all pretty much work the same. Unless we're just doing all non electric, which is you know like a shotgun primer. Can also, there's different you know ways of doing that. And then uh, you know your wire cutters are working like these electric caps and electric matches and stuff. And then the last thing, your uh, everyone's got to have a pair of these, even though you never use them. But you can still use the spike powder and stuff. But these are your cap crimpers, cap cut, you know, fuse cutters. Yeah, I'd say if you're buying a blast machine, get get like this like this BT50 that's the blaster sold supply. It's 50 caps, or get there's one there's the Buzzbox 75. It's like a 75 cap. It's pretty nice. So we're just gonna do a stick of dynamite so they can see what high explosives are. Then we'll just take that spike and you're gonna just push it in the end of the uh, of the dynamite. Right here. Yep. Right down in the. Yep, just like that. That's good. So uh, we'll just stick that in.
Oh, it's a blast. All right, you ready? Four. All right. Three, <laughs> two, one. Fire in the hole. So, half a pound of high explosives. So that could move, you know, anywhere from a yard to three or four yards of rock. Almost hit my GoPro. <laughs> yes, sir. That was totally awesome. Specifically says you're probably gonna break your camera. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that's my uh, sacrificial camera right there. That was actually a low explosive. That was our Royx 35 gram cartridge with the Royx Max Fire igniter. Uh, just about two feet deep. Um, maybe one cartridge length of stemming. It's I think 110 millimeters. That's you know eight inches in freedom units or something and um, some sharp gravel a little bit of drill cutting and some water to make sure it really locks together sometimes you can make like a little clay plug it kind of helps it stay really uh stemmed in and uh you know it did the business yeah it did check that out you know, it's like a partially buried uh we could have probably taken that burden back a little farther and probably still would have worked i like the steel one it's nice and heavy but it basically provides the uh it bolts the cartridge on the end you stab it on the end and then the wires get threaded through here and then they have this whole setup where you can hook it up to a generator or whatever. I'd usually just hook it up to wire on a blasting machine. Easy as anything. Um, but yeah, you just get back, you know, 20 feet or something to pop it. You know, you, the key to this thing working though is you need to have, like, clean the hole really well. Otherwise it gets jammed up and doesn't go all the way in and stem. But it'll blow up a couple of cubic feet of rock. So you need to trim something like laser precise or, you know, like for cave rescue, this is the hot ticket. You know, oh, yeah. blow up a rock underneath the guy's leg without hurting him. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. so yeah, he's... What are you doing right now, Clean. Yeah, this is a micro blaster. This is... The hole needs to be clean to get everything down far enough. Really to get the coupling and all that into that little groove and you got to take like a toothbrush or a toothpick or something and clean that groove it gets full of rock dust but yeah you just put it on there and then you just stab it in like that and now you got your tools and we just shoot this like uh like with a rag stick or whatever. you leave that on top yeah that, that stays like it is if you want to you can put like a rock on top of it to stem it even better yeah i think that's even in the instructions if i remember all right let's wire this up yeah, go ahead. It's just like the other one. Just twist one carefully around okay. each one. Right. They're open. They're gonna hit the bigger bugger. Wired up. Ready to blow. We're good on this side. All clear. Check that out. Well, like, you see how, like, you know, it's how I was. 
So John, what are we going to do here? All right, we're going to blow up some ANFO. So an ammonium nitrate fuel oil ANFO, this is a what they call a blasting agent. See that? It's these prills. That's basically a ammonium nitrate fertilizer. It's kind of popcorned up to make it, that's what blasting grade prills are. They're very porous. They're different than fertilizer, which doesn't work very well for this. And it's got, what, six or eight percent diesel oil in it. Yeah. And um, the thing about this, it's considered a blasting agent, not a high explosive, meaning you will not set this off with just a blasting cap. You need something like to prime it like this, like a stick of dynamite or half a stick of dynamite or duck cord will do it too if you loop it up a few times. Good yeah, there you go. Nader? Yeah, there's a thing like, right, like checking that the info is mixed right with my taste hammer. Take the, make the half hitch off the side and then slip it over. Is that to make it uh, like, is it it's more yep. dense? That's good. Than water? Drop well, it down yeah. inside that. Put it in there. Right there. And it also has. All right. There you go. It's pitching stuff. Yeah. Mm, da, da, da. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. This is, there's a difference between this, this and the last one. Energetic. All right. Yeah, but it can launch it like at the speed of a high power rifle. So, we're not, there's really not that much yeah, info right. inside no, that container, but it's got no. probably 10 times the energy of the last thing we set off. Be sure to check out John's website, accxresearch.com. There are some great resources here that you'll appreciate. Specifically, on the top right, go under resources, check out publications and journal articles, and you'll be able to read up on blasting for rescue applications, rock breaking for rescue teams. There's many articles in the, at the ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal, small-scale blasting, so many great articles, and also go under Resource Library. You'll be able to download in a PDF document the Small Mine Timbering publication, uh, Mining Engineer's Handbook, and so much more. So be sure to check out John's website. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.